it's a nice day for a white wedding or a black wedding. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. If you haven't been here before, I am Crystal Leandra. I am your host this spooky evening. And today we're going to be doing goth makeup. And this is also to celebrate my friends, Vampires Everywhere, who just released their cover of White Wedding, Billy Idol. They did an amazing job. They also absolutely killed it with their single from Lost Boys, which is Cry Little Sister. Amazing. I've met the lead singer, Michael, a few times. Beautiful human, beautiful human. Also, Curse Cosmetics. They just always keep me going. They, I love the CEO of Curse. She always keeps me in the loop of all these beautiful, wonderful band collabs that she does. And I'm just having the time of my life right now, guys. So without further ado, celebrating vampires everywhere in their release, we're going to do a wedding goth look. And this is the look for today. It's giving Victorian goth glam. It's a nice day for a white wedding. I didn't realize what a lack there was in the community of offbeat brides, alt brides, gothic brides. I've been contacted by so many brides on TikTok that ask me if I'm still doing makeup for a living, and I'm not, unfortunately. But let me tell you what, if you were a alternative makeup artist, especially in Vegas like I am, you would make bank. So since I can't help you by being there on your wedding day, I'm going to teach you something that would be considered an easier look for your alternative gothic wedding day. Of course, we're using all Cursed Cosmetics products today. This is going to be a very matte look. I'm actually going to do another wedding look this week with the new Jolie collection, but for today we're using mostly Cursed products. I'm going to go in with the Undead Foundation. This is a very, very full coverage matte foundation. So if that's not something you want for your wedding day, I mean, this is a long lasting. Really, Cursed Cosmetics leans more towards stage makeup. I have all of the Cursed palettes, but I think I'm going to be using mostly the Scoring the End of the Earth Motionless and White collection today. I am very bare faced right now, just very clean skin. I'm going to do my hair last. So first let's talk about what my skin prep would be if I was doing my own makeup for a gothic wedding. Now once again, this is geared towards not glass skin, not glowy skin, more of a matte vibe. I'll do more, you know, in the future. But for today, I'm going to say, you know, I have very oily skin. So I'm going to be going in with the Versed Gel Moisturizer. Now I have a top few gel moisturizers. Versed is my number one favorite and coming in second is the one that's by Bliss. So I'm just going to put this in and pat it in. Skin prep is always the most important step because if you start your makeup with really dry skin or non prep primed skin, it, there's a likelihood that it's not going to last an entire day. I always let each layer sit so that it really absorbs in the skin. So I'll be back after this moisturizer sits. Next up, I'm going to go in with an eye gel. I like the Good Molecules Wake Me Up eye gel. It's just one of my favorites and it's only like $7. Another really great brand is The Rock ROC. They have really great eye products for under the eye and I even put it up a little bit higher too. The last step is going to be using some sort of a primer so it really depends on what your skin is like right so for me I have oily skin and the best is gripping primer so the one by Milk, this one, any of the gel really gripping primers are best for my skin but if you're fighting pores Photo Finish is probably one of my favorites by Smashbox. I have like three or four of these on hand. ELF has some really good primers. If you're wanting something a little bit more glowy, incorporate an illuminator into it. But remember, think back to what foundation you're using. And this foundation is extremely matte. So if I put something glowy underneath it, it's not going to really come through. Okay, Power Grip Primer. We're going to go in with that next. Key to this is you want to let this sit and get tacky. So you need to leave it for at least a minute, so I'll be back. Sometimes I'll use a hand fan to like speed up the process. 
Okay, we're gonna go ahead and pop in with the Curse Cosmetics Foundation. Isn't this packaging to die for, by the way? That's why I didn't get rid of the packaging. It's so cute. I am using the lightest shade. This is the lightest shade, Angela. It also does come with a concealer on top. Now, this is for spot concealing, in my opinion. And it, I think that's what it says on the website, too. But what I will take, it's a very full coverage, very thick, heavy concealer. But it is specifically for spot concealing. So I had a breakout this week. So what I'm going to do is go through any problem areas that I see. You can also use NARS for this. And I'm actually going to tap this into my under eye, too. Just where I have a bit of dark circles. I haven't been doing my dark circle routine lately and it shows. If you have dark circles, use the Rock Eye Cream with peptides. It is a miracle worker. I use it at nighttime. Okay, so I don't really see any other blemishes. I'm gonna let this sit for like a minute. The longer you let it sit, the more it will dry and it'll be a really thick, heavier consistency. And then once it's drier, I will go through and tap it out with my fingers, so I'll be back. Okay, let's go ahead and tap this out lightly. It's just gonna give you a little bit of extra coverage where you're not feeling confident. I use my finger for this part because it will leave it a little bit more full coverage than using like a sponge or a brush. See the difference that that makes? Okay, now let's go ahead and go in with the foundation. I know that there's a pump, but I'm, I'm going to want a lot because we're doing a wedding look. I'm doing a very full coverage wedding look. Also, if you're not gothic or alternative, there's no need to leave hate on this video. It's just not for you, right? I had so many people before I did videos like gothic wedding and like it's too much for a wedding. Well, you're not a part of the genre, then it's okay. So I just put a ton on my hand. I like to use a damp beauty blender, clean, and I'm just gonna start pressing this right into the skin until we have a full face and a base. Some people like to do their eyebrows first. There's no right or wrong way, do you, boo? Okay, we have our base up and going. I'm gonna add another light. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna add another couple of lights to this so we can really see what I'm doing. I wanna help you guys for your wedding day as much as I can. Okay, I think that even though it is a wedding that we still wanna go with a gray contour. Fenty by Amber. Ooh, and I'm almost out. It's time for, it's time for more. So this is Fenty Amber. And I'm gonna go full coverage, like I said. If you really wanna snatch for photos, I would say even wrapping it to the front. And I like to use the back side of my beauty blender to blend it out. This is just way more of a gray rather than warm contour. So it's definitely giving more of cool contour vibes. For a full coverage on concealer, my two favorites are e.l.f. in the cooler tones, which I think this one's called Rose or something like that. What is this called? Light, this one's light ivory and this is like level one magic concealer from ABH definitely need a nose contour my two favorite pens for nose contour Victoria Beckham is amazing it's not super gray but it's definitely not a total taupe she glam I have the second level this one's a little bit more on the amber side and I'm gonna use this for nose contour today I personally like more of a button nose look. Not everybody does. And then I like to take my fingers and just blend this in. I am going to use the highlight side of the She Glam pen and I'm just going to go down the center of my nose and make the little button again just to ensure that that really stays in place. Okay, for powder, we're going to pop on the Curse Cosmetics Translucent Moon Powder. This is what she looks like. I need to find a puff. And I mean, for for wedding makeup, I would suggest doing a full, a full bake if you want it to last. So I'm going to bake under the eyes. I'm going to bake any areas that I feel like I get a lot of oil. For me especially, is my T-zone. 
even down my nose I just want to set that nose contour especially the sides of my nose this gets oily my smile lines I'm gonna set part of my chin and we want to make this a little bit sharper on both sides I might even just powder puff not set the edges so we're gonna let this sit for a minute and I'll be back all right so the magic behind baking is that you don't really have to use powder for the rest of your face because you can kind of use what's left on your face already so I'll just take a fluffy brush and I will just buff this in even a little bit down my neck just to ensure everything is set now especially something for like bridal makeup you really want to take it serious so I'm gonna set in between each layer currently so I mean look I have I love Urban Decay the all-nighter this one is pretty much like Urban Decay in a bottle I usually use this one as my final step but when I'm setting in between I use the Make It Last Milani and I, I do a pretty good amount and then I will take my sponge carefully and lightly on a clean side and I'll just push that all in together it's kind of going to bring some life back to the face and not make it appear as heavy or cakey and now we want to really let that dry down next part is contour and or blush now this this is really up to you as a bride right as far as goth makeup goes blush really isn't a thing I don't even wear a ton of blush my favorite and really only blush palette that I love is makeup revolution and this looks old but it's not um, this is like the third palette I've owned with this it's called the French lace palette I think vintage blush lace and it actually gives kind of a sheen let me show you what it looks like kind of swatched see how it's almost like almost sheer but a sheen and I really only use these two colors this whole palette's about ten dollars at Ulta it's really up to you on if you incorporate blush or not right like there's no right or wrong way to do it depends on what kind of goth you're going for me I like more of a elegant goth vampire goth although vampire goth can be a little bit more on the red side red undertones um, I think today would probably be more goth glam vintage goth for me it's really up to you I am gonna go ahead and incorporate some gray contour okay this is the goth palette from sunset makeup I think this was only about twelve dollars if, if I remember correctly it's not very much and inside it's actually more of a trad goth palette but um, I like this gray tone I'm gonna use this gray tone as an eyeshadow base today and for a contour so I'm gonna take this kind of brush how heavy you do your contouring is up to you right I don't want a ton ton but I do want to give it that goth undead sort of look if that makes sense so I'm gonna go in and I'm just gonna lightly buff in a little bit of this gray lightly it doesn't need to be heavy see how it kind of just hits the cheekbone like that now I'm also planning ahead because once there is an illuminating highlight over that it's gonna look really really beautiful right so I don't want a ton ton of gray but I do want enough that you can see what you're doing if you want to skip this step you can also skip this step I'm taking a clean brush a clean contour brush and I'm just buffing that gray out just slightly see how it's just enough where it gives you that like snatched cheekbone if you don't want it to be too dramatic then don't go in heavy-handed and what I'm doing is taking this clean brush to buff it out because I also don't want any lines maybe you do want lines so if you do want lines and you're very trad goth you know what to do make it very sharp I don't I want it to be a little bit more Victorian goth softer sort of look next step is going to be eyebrows I think that it's only appropriate for this look personally for me to do either black eyebrows or taupe I have very blonde hair 
I have done black eyebrows before. I just did black brows the other day. I think maybe we won't do black brows today. My favorite pomade for black brows is Ardell Soft Black. Although this doesn't look soft black. Like this is very black. I got this on Amazon for like $9. I've tried everything. I've tried ABH pomade in black specifically. I've tried every brand in Sephora and um, in Ulta. And for me with such oily skin and living in Vegas where it's really hot, none of them are as waterproof as this. When you put this on, it does not budge. But for this... I think I'm just going to do my regular brows, my, my regular brow routine. And for my regular brow routine, I actually just use the Milani pomade. No one makes a black dark enough though, you know, like a real jet black, that is the only one. So this is, I believe, soft brown or light brown. And taupe is a little bit too light for me. I just got a brand new one. And I'm going to go ahead and get my brows started right now. Now your brow routine doesn't matter. You know, goth brows are often known for being higher arched, quite sharp with a point. I'm not really going to do that for me today just because I do want a little bit more of the softer goth side for wedding makeup, but you do what you want you it is most comfortable. I would suggest doing a couple practice rounds of wedding makeup before your actual wedding day so, and take pictures so that you know exactly what you're doing. Take notes even. Now I like to arch mine a little bit past my pupil, like right here, and then I bring it back down. That is the start or base of my brows. Then I will go in with the NYX pencil. What is this called? lift and snatch it's a brow tint like a very sharp pin and i have the shade oh this is black which is i also use that with the ardell pomade but i need my shade for everyday wear which is ash brown and i take this to make little hairs all over my brows okay and then the last step is i will take a pot concealer so like nars and a very very flat concealer brush like this and I'm going to go through and clean up both the top and the bottom. Take a separate brush to buff out that line and sometimes I'll go back in with that same NYX pen to do a second layer of hairs because it makes it look a little bit more natural. I'm going to add a little bit of powder right in the middle and I'm going to go ahead and set this again so that the brows don't budge. All right, we are ready to start the eyes. I'm going to get my P. Louise eyeshadow base out and use this as my base. I just like to put a little pea size on the back of my hand and dip in with the edge of my beauty blender and tap that in. Eyeshadow base is really important. Yes, you can use concealer, but for a wedding day, I just wouldn't skip this step if you want it to last. Alrighty, I'm going to go into the goth palette again. This is from Sunset Makeup. And I'm going to pick up some of this gray on this brush and tap some excess off so we don't have fallout. And then I'm going to start creating the shape. I'm going to place this just a little bit below the brow bone. Make sure you have some good brushes. I love Jessup brushes, J-E-S-S-U-P brushes on Amazon. Or if you're wanting to get really fancy, you can go with Spectrum. And if you're on a budget, Spectrum is out of the UK by the way. If you're on a budget, the best brushes you can get are Wet n Wild. In fact, I think this is a Wet n Wild brush I'm using right now. Okay, so that's kind of where I'm going with this. We're done with the Sunset Palette. Pulling out the Curse Cosmetics Motionless in White Palette. If you haven't seen it, this is the palette. It's beautiful. So really what I'm going to be using here are three colors, which is, well, maybe four. We have We Become the Night, which is a matte black. Corpse Nation, which is this matte brown. Cause of Death, which has got a really lot of sparkle to this black and then porcelain, which is right here on the inner side. So if you don't have this palette, you really need 
black, brown, sparkly white, and a sparkly black. When you're using black shadow like this, I will take some powder and a powder puff and I'm going to create a safety barrier under my eye so that if any fallout happens, it will go in the powder and I can brush it away. So I'm just going to create a safety barrier here with heavy powder until we're done using the black. Can you do your eye makeup first? Sure. If that's what you want to do, go for it. It's not what I'm doing. Okay, We Become the Night is a very matte, pitch black shade. I'm going to start creating my shape. So I think I want kind of like a wing in this area. I'm going to do kind of a cut crease type of thing. I think we're going to go to about right here. So I went at like an angle with the eye. If you can tell, it kind of goes up here and then it comes down. So the angle is like this. And I did that because you're kind of giving an optical illusion to the eye itself. It's going to give the eyes a more elongated look. Okay. So let's do the other side. Now we're going to take a clean brush and we're going to buff out parts of these edges. So total clean, nothing's on it. I'm just going to go through and kind of marry that gray and black together so that there's no harsh lines. And I'm going to do the same on this inner area. Now you don't want to overly process it because you'll create a new color, right? You just want to lightly blend and buff. So see the difference of this side versus this side. See how harsh it is versus blended and shaded. I'll always sort of take a step back, look at it from far away, make sure both sides look even. Don't want it to look funny. I'm actually going to dip back into the gray shade again and just sort of melt these just a little bit on this inner corner. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is take kind of a pencil brush and I'm going to dip into Corpse Nation which is just a plain matte brown. I'm going to use this to make kind of a transition from the black to brown to where it's going to be porcelain, which is the white. So I'm not packing a ton on, just about that much, and then we'll go through with a clean brush and blend that one out too. Okay, I went ahead and brushed away underneath. Now, porcelain is a really good shade where you don't have to do a lot with it. I don't really need a tacky base on the bottom. I'm taking this little teeny brush with some black, we become the night. And I'm going to create just a little bit of a line. And I'm just trying to outline. I want to make it a little bit more distinct a little bit more dramatic that's also very much goth makeup. Little tiny brush, take your time. Kind of carve it out where you want it to be. I want it to stay dramatic like that. I'm not going to blend that out. I'm going to do the same on the other side. And I like to kind of hold the mirror back so I can kind of look at both eyes. So I know I'm doing this even. Mm -hmm. Something kind of like that. Okay, now we want to pack in uh, porcelain, which is this white. Actually, I think I might use some as a highlight brow shade as well. <clears throat> okay, now porcelain, we need to press this in. You can use your finger. I'm getting a fresh brush, very flat brush. I'm picking up pigment that looks like this for the porcelain. 
And now I'm going to press it in to the eye under that black. So it's kind of like a cut crease, but yet we didn't really do a cut crease. It's kind of like a fake cut crease. I'm going to blend out the edges with my finger. I'm going to build that up a little bit more. It's my favorite shade in the whole palette. Let's go to the other side and do the same thing. Okay, I'm going to go back in with the brown shade. I think I'm going to get a fresh brush and I'm going to just lightly blend that brown back into porcelain on the edges so that it kind of looks a little bit more seamless. I'm going to take my finger and just really press that pigment in. I might even add just a little bit more. I like to be very precise with the brush first. Porcelain is so soft that sometimes building it is the way to go. Now it's up to you, but under the eye, I think I am going to do more of a traditional goth sort of look. So I'm going to take We Become the Night, which is the matte black, and I'm going to buff it in under the waterline. Now you're more than welcome to do a red or something more dramatic. Maybe you want to do a taupe. If you need to clean up the edges, just take a little bit of concealer, sharpen it up like that. Now I'm going to take a gel eyeliner, this one's from Essence, I'm going to load up my lash line with it. Now I want to use Cause of Death, which is this black shimmer shade that's in the palette. I'm going to take a very pointy, precise brush, and I'm going to just pack it on top on the bottom waterline. You may not be able to see this on camera. I also meant to take a little bit of porcelain for my inner corner too. So I'm going to take a really teeny... There's hollow points next to it, but I think hollow points is just too... I think I'm going to stick with this just since it's wedding makeup. Hollow points is just too multi-chrome for this. Secretly, I just hate using this palette. I know I've said that before. I just wish I could keep this as like a collector's item and never touch it. Okay, we're going to go ahead and do another set with the setting spray and let it dry. Let's go in with Kirk Cosmetics Motionless in White Eyeliner. I'm just going to do a simple wing. Okay, next I'm going to go in using the Jolie Beauty Makeup Collection. We're doing a video on this this week, but this is Entangled, and it is a liquid eye metal, and it's black and silver. It's gorgeous. It's like now one of my top favorite products. I'm going to take something really tiny like a nail brush, a nail art brush, which is, I don't know if you know what these look like. They're very tiny and thin at the top. Let me put it like here so you can see. Product on the tip of that. Just like that, very little bit. And now we're going to outline the top of this. Just gives it that little extra bridal detail that we're looking for. And I'm actually going to draw over my lashes with this. Do you see the difference? It's like you're crying tears of glitter. I mean, you could get crazy with this if you wanted to because it's so pretty. I might even just add a little line of it right there. Ugh, stop. Stop it. I think I'm going to go go ham. Like, I can't help it. This is one of those products that I'm just like so obsessed with. I'm going to take a little pencil brush and I'm going to pack it under the eye. Ugh. 
That's gonna give you that goth glam wow factor. Okay, we need to let this dry before we move on to the next step. Just invest in one of these, it's your best friend. Okay, I'm gonna pop on some pretty basic mascara. This is Essence uh, Lash Volume. I don't know, I think it makes my natural lashes look the best out of any other mascaras. Now, I didn't curl my lashes, because I'm gonna pop on falsies anyways. So if you wanna not skip that step, it's up to you. Falsies, I'm gonna take these kind of dramatic I ripped this one, ignore that, but I got these off, I think, Amazon or maybe Shein, I can't remember. I actually have a pair that I used yesterday. If you treat your lashes correct, you can get a few wears out of them. So I like to just hold them firmly and I will pull the previous glue off before I reapply glue. Okay, I have my favorite eyelash glue is Latex Free. It's linked in my Amazon store. And I will take a thin layer of glue and put it on the band. And now you need to just sit this down and let it get tacky. So don't touch it for like 30 or 45 seconds. Really till the glue about turns clear. Because when it's tacky and you adhe adhere it to your eye, it will stick longer. I'm going to take a little drop of glue and go here and here and one drop here, here and walk away. Walk away for 15, 30 seconds. Make sure you get some curled eyelash tweezers like this and we are going to pop this sucker on. Once it's sat for like that 30 seconds, it literally just pops right on. Okay, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go do my hair come back and we'll talk about what options I would do for lips for this look Whoa, amazing what the hair does right changes the look I have three different veils here so we can try two I have like a lace black one regular like tear one and then a red one but I figured you guys would want to see what each of them look like with the look this hairstyle doesn't go with this barrette, but this is giving Lydia vibes. The red is very cute. I just got a new one though that I wanted to try. This one isn't as poofy as the other ones. I prefer these, these clips better. You just slide it right into your hair. And then, can't tell how big this tool is. There we go. Oh, I love that one. This is a new one, so we'll stick with that for now. Once again, very much offbeat bride, right? Okay, so now that I just did my hair, I'm gonna just freshen up. All right, I wanna try a couple of different lips with this. You guys can let me know what your favorite veil is in the comments and what your favorite lip color is with this. Vampires everywhere. Obviously we're doing a collab kind of with them. This isn't paid by the way. This is just, I love working with Marielle who's the CEO of Cursed and she's always let me in on the collabs with all of the bands and it's just so fun. So I just support them. Really it's just me supporting them. So Vampires Everywhere. I've met Michael. He's the lead singer of Vampires Everywhere. He is a very sweet human. He reminds me a lot of Chris Motionless. He's very quiet, a little bit withdrawn. He's a DJ here in Vegas. So I've gotten to see him um, in Vegas a few times and he's, he's a very sweet soul. So this was the collab they did. This is a crayon pencil and you can use it everywhere. I have tried it on eyes. I really prefer it on lips personally. You can use it as like a blush too. So we're going to use this today first. Also, I have really been embracing my witchy side more than ever. And I have a, I have a little, I don't want to, is it called a mole? Or a, my mom used to call it a beauty mark. She also calls it the witch's mark. And I was only like one of three that inherited it in our family. So lately I've been taking a freckle pin. And I've been enhancing it. And it's because like, when I put my makeup on, it covers it. So anyway, I'm gonna let that dry for a sec. Motionless in white eyeliner pencil. I'm gonna use it as a 
lip liner first. I'm going on and do like, I'm gonna create like kind of an ombre feathered effect for the red lip pencil. Now I'm going to get a just kind of a flat brush and just lightly feather out these edges. It's so far giving Bram Stoker's Dracula Bride and I'm obsessed. Like it would even be pretty if you had like a nude lip with this look. But for now we're doing vampires everywhere. Beautiful color, right? I don't know why I don't wear red lips more often. Maybe that needs to change. Okay, I'm going to take a new clean brush and feather it again. Clean up any spots that you need to with a concealer brush. You know what I forgot to do too? I forgot to put highlight. Let's do this P. Louise blush highlight. Totally skipped that step by accident. It's a very cool toned icy blue highlight almost. Um, it's definitely going to give you like I'm dead look, so if you don't like that, it's not for you. I'm going to do nose. Look at that. Do a lip. God, that just like completes it. Like it just helps give that. I was like, what's it missing? It's missing something. Then we're going to do the sides. Do you see what I'm saying? Like Ice Queen is giving Edward Scissor hands, right? This is the shade Frosty Fantasy by P. Louise, just so you know. I'm actually going to take this up where I put that gray contour to. Perfect. See, see, that's like that undead bride look. just wanted it to be a little extra on the nose. Okay, for... I, I really want to do... I want to do a black lip and then a glossy black lip, but... I also, just for the heck of it, for giggles, I want to use one of the multi-chrome lip glosses from Cursed. This is the shade Siren Tail, which is almost like a purple shift, purple green. This is the shade Celestial. It's like a deep, dark purple. I feel like that's going to be the one that we use. And then I want to try... Unicorn Blood, which is like almost a, it's a little too bright, I think. So let's try the purple one, Celestial. Let's try that one. Okay, we're going to do another Curse Cosmetics, Curse Cosmetics Lip Liner.
We're going to feather it again. Celestial. Okay, for the last one, we're going to do a black liquid lip. Motionless and white liquid lip. So this is the look with a matte liquid lip. Of course, I want to step it up one more time. And this time I want to take the Curse Cosmetics Asylum 49 Lip Gloss and I just want to see how it looks with a glossy lip. I'm just going to pop this right on top. Let me know what you guys think below. I wanted, you know, you could dress this look up even more. You could add rhinestones. Like, you could do, you could do so much more. I tried to keep it really basic for you guys. I'm going to end with just some setting spray. That should always be your final step. I want to do more wedding looks for you guys, but you need to tell me what you're looking for. If you want something a little bit more extreme, we can do that. I'm not confident with doing black contour like Trad Gossett. They do it, it's an art in my opinion. Like doing actual Trad Goth makeup is such an art form and it's not my particular art form. This I think is a beautiful look for a dark bride, edgy bride, alt bride, goth bride who still wants to bring in the gray contour, the blue icy highlight. Like always stick with cooler tones if you're wanting to go with the goth side, right? But there's a fine line you walk because you also, a lot of grays, gray tones can have blue undertones and you, it, it's a fine line that you have to walk. So just really check yourself on the, the colors that you're using. Can I also say I just love my job? Like, I get to dress up as a gothic bride for work. Like, I'm just very, very grateful to the universe. I'm grateful to you guys watching. Please make sure you're subscribed if you haven't already. Join my community on TikTok here on YouTube. Patreon's gonna be up and going soon. I'm gonna start with like some reality series, like behind the scenes content and first access to my podcast, my paranormal podcast, now that that's going again. And um, I might even do some extra looks on Patreon for just my subscribers. Um, that are requested by you guys. I don't know what we're going to do yet, but I know that um, it's going to come to me as we go along. Love you guys so much. Make sure you subscribe. Also, I have a code for Cursed, which is Crystal Leandra, if you're interested in ordering any of this amazing product. And let me know what you guys think below. Which veil and which lip color would you go with for this look? And what should we do next? I love you. P.S. Should we start a goth bride series? I think we should. I think we should. Let me know in the comments below.